So it was at this point that I realized two things. First, that I had been training my body from the knees up to be more strong and powerful while running on lower legs that were toothpicks. So I was kind of asking for it. All right, here's my hot take. Shin splints do not need to exist. Huh? You know what I mean? And I know for a fact that we can make them a thing of the past. First, let me tell you my story, if this is the first piece of content of mine you've seen. I'm a high school record-breaking track athlete. Um, not in the way you probably think. Actually, for running some of the slowest high school times in history for my school. Like, I literally got last place every race for years. So since then, I spent the next seven years overcoming chronic injury after another in the pursuit of getting faster. And eventually, with the training system of ATG with my mentor, Ben Patrick, I was able to escape this injury loop and then eventually start making some progress in my speed. And so fast forward all the way to now, I'm using these same principles that got me out of pain to pursue a crazy goal. Pretty much, I wanna be the least athletic guy ever to make the Olympics for sprinting. And mainly just because if a slow and fragile kid like me can make it to the biggest of stages, then it's evidence that your dream is really not that crazy. Especially if you're equipped with the right tools and patience. It's really the bigger conversation I'm after, but track is just a cool way to pursue it. So in the pursuit of trying to get faster, one of the most consistent roadblocks I faced was shin splints. And the biggest reason was just lack of information in myself, but then also consistently in the field. After training my ass off and finessing my way onto a D2 track program, I eventually got shin splints within three months of training and missed two years of competition because of shin splints that eventually became stress fractures. And so it was at this point that I realized two things. First, that I had been training my body from the knees up to be more strong and powerful while running on lower legs that were toothpicks. So I was kind of asking for it. And two, nowhere in the top programs or in PT protocols or even exercise science literature was there any focus or plan on measurably strengthening your lower legs. It really wasn't until I started training the ATG program that I heard someone say, get this strong at this, this, and this, and you won't have the pain. And I was like. So pretty much what seemed like an unsolvable mystery just became a math equation. And I ran with this approach so that no impact from running or jumping could overwhelm my lower legs. So the point of this video is to distill and simplify all that realization and just give you a three-step checklist that you can use for overcoming shin splints. Disclaimer. This is not medical advice. So, step one. Training the tibialis anterior, the muscle directly in front of the shin bone with the tib raise. Perfect form on this is quads flex with no bend in the knees, lowering with control all the way down to a deep stretch, and then a full contraction at the top. And this is the most important, has to be pain free. So for the tib raise, we have a goal weight of 15 reps at 20% body weight, and I weigh about 180 pounds, so I'm gonna use about 35 pounds. So if you don't have access to a tib bar yet, you can get started in the wall variation, which is really straightforward. Butt on the wall, legs straight, quads flexed, pull the toes up, slowly lower. The further you go out, the harder it is, the closer, the easier it gets. You're gonna to wanna to do sets of 25. Eventually, you're gonna to wanna to get a tib bar, something measurable, so you can actually treat it like strength training and progress over time. But this will do to get started. Step two is training a seated calf raise, and this is gonna train right behind the shin bone with the soleus and the posterior tibialis. This is that really deep type of shin pain. Oh, it's a deep burn! That tends to be more chronic and often leads to the stress fractures like I had. You actually have two options on this. You can train this one with a machine or with free weights like I'm showing with the dumbbells. The slants I'm using are ATG Buddies. It's our product that we made, American made. It's a super versatile tool that we made for all ATG exercises. I'll put the link in the description for our equipment with the code if you need it. So perfect form on this is gonna be a full stretch at the bottom, full contraction at the top with no bouncing. Training the lower legs gets a bad rap and I feel like a big reason why is because it's done poorly because of the bouncing. And so for the seated calf raise, the goal weight on this one is half body weight for 15 reps. And I'll show you what a set of this looks like.
And lastly, again, the main rule on this is that it's pain-free. If you need to regress to a lighter weight, that'll be the fastest route to progression. Again, if access to equipment's limited, you can train the KOT calf raise, which is this knees over toes calf raise. So keeping your feet shoulder width apart, you're gonna bend the knees as much as they can with your ankle mobility. Keep a straight line from the knees to the shoulders, and you're gonna lift the entire body up, slowly lower to a deep stretch. You can train the single leg. This one is also great to use with slants. The slants I'm using are ATG buddies, it's our product. Step three is a Peterson step up. So this is actually gonna train the strength of your feet and the back of the shin with the posterior tibialis and the soleus. The perfect form on this is a heel lift as you lower, gently tapping the front heel to the ground, pushing back up without dropping that back heel until the front foot's off the ground. The goal for this one is half body weight for 15 reps. And again, I know this is super redundant. Training this pain-free is the fastest way to progress on this, even if that means starting with no weight or even with assistance. Alongside the Peterson step up, pushing a sled forward is another great way to build strength through the feet and lower legs. So if you progress through these three steps gradually, never working through pain will improve the health and strength of your lower legs. Because one, you're gonna get consistent blood flow to the area. Circulation is the body's preferred way of healing. When we ice, when we put ice packs on our shins like I was doing all through college, walking around looking like a fool, it constricts the blood vessels, you take off the ice, and then it floods it back with more blood. So essentially just circulation. We're doing that just by burning the crap out of it and actually building strength. You're not only gonna immediately improve how it feels through the circulation, you're gonna leave lasting resilience in the tissue in front of the shin, behind the shin, all around. So it just won't make sense. It won't add up. Shin splints will not fit the equation. And the more I understood this math equation of shin splints, the less hopeless I felt because then it became a matter of work. Not rest, not 12 weeks of ice, not try this weird thing, that weird thing. It was just work, but directed where it actually counts. And it led me to not feeling so helpless about it and unlucky as if it was some mystical reason I didn't understand why I had shin splints, but none of my teammates did. I just happened to be the weakest. So I really hope this breakdown leads to some aha realizations and gives you clarity and focus. This is how I can improve this. It's not some mystery. It really can't be. It's a matter of strength and resilience that you can build through smart training over time. I appreciate you watching. If you are deep in your injury loop right now, trust me, I feel you. I've been there for a majority of my athletic career thinking something was just wrong with me, not knowing I was right on the cusp of breaking through and not dealing with injuries anymore. So stick it out, put in the work, it's gonna get better, peace.